Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Lavi Jain. I'm a software engineer at Prezi and also a Women Tech Maker Ambassador and a GDG Melbourne organizer. And tonight I'll be talking about BFFs could be your new best friends forever. Just for the context, BFFs are your backends for frontends. So I have a question for you all. How many of you have worked on BFFs or have heard about it? Cool. It's not getting that much popularity. Maybe from tonight it will. Anyway, before I start, um, I have a story to share. All right, so as you saw in the video, there used to be simpler times when you just had one front end, uh, which was uh, powered by your backend, simple, easy. But then as time and technology grew, so did multiple devices and multiple channels, all being served by the same backend, making that backend more like a monolith. Now, over the years, many companies have been trying to break away from a monolith into multiple microservices, but it is not an easy problem to solve because at the end of the day, these devices, they have different needs and they are being served from the same backend. So there needs to be a lot of processing done for your data. You need to do a lot of manipulation for it. So solution, BFFs. Now, BFF, is like a very thin layer, a backend for frontend. It's a very thin layer. It is between your frontend and your backend. So earlier, when your frontend was calling your backend multiple times, this time it is just going to call your BFF for once, and the rest of the calls would be managed by your BFFs to your backend. Again, it is a very thin layer, and there is no logic in there, none at all. It is supposed to be very simple and plain. Um, one thing to note is that if you have a very good microservice architecture, you might not even need a BFF. You need a BFF to prolong the life of your monolith. Um, coming on to some benefits of a BFF. Now, BFFs are easier to maintain. As I mentioned, they are very thin layer. There's not much processing going in there. There's no business logic in there. So they're independently managed and they have, you have the flexibility to maintain it. Now, obviously, it makes more sense that if it is going to serve a particular front-end, then that particular front-end team may manage their own BFF. The other thing is that it is resilient to API changes. Now, someday you decide you have to make some changes in your APIs, but your front-end is not ready to consume that change. You can have that BFF layer in between to handle that bit and can go for graceful degradation. What also you can do is do some caching and serve that data from your cache. Uh, the next one is better error handling. So because you have generic API serving all the uh, front ends, you might have multiple kind of errors, but because of too much of processing, you might end up just throwing some generic errors. But with a layer in between, now you can read those errors and provide better uh, errors to um, better and meaningful errors to your customers. So better user experience in all. While I'm talking about all these PFFs, I need to mention that your mileage may vary. My experiences at Prezi while investigating and working on BFFs have been really positive. The reason being, 
Now you may ask that, okay, lovely, you are adding a thin layer between there, but what about the latency? At the end of the day, you're adding a layer between there. Then I will ask you that how much are you trying to process and how much are you trying to retrieve? There needs to be a balancing act between the two. Now, I'll give you a good example for it. We at Prezi sell gift cards, right? So if you want to buy a gift card, what you would do is just place a draft order. And then you might actually create a payment intent, which might talk to Stripe or some other external service. Then you process the payment, and then you finally complete the order. That means you are making multiple calls to your backend. So there is a lot of back and forth going on between your front end and back end. Now, with a BFF layer in between there, what you're going to do is just call your BFF once. The BFF will do all the processing and give you a response. You've bought a card. The good, uh, the good bit is you can now place this thin layer closer to your backend. That means you can even deploy it in the same availability zone, same machine, uh, so that your latency is reduced, response time is uh, shorter. The other way you can save on latency is by caching. So another good example for it is now at Prezi, we also have a wall of cards. Now all the cards that you can buy, it is not going to change that frequently. So you can cache those results and your BFF can serve it straight away. So that saves you uh, obviously more network calls and reduces latency. Now, the other question one may ask is, you are going to have multiple BFFs. It might result in code duplication. But really, because you anyway are going to have more targeted code for your front end. And even if you feel like you are having a lot of code duplication, then isn't it actually going to decouple your front end and your back end? It would give more flexibility to scale to maintain your systems. OK. Now we can dive in straight away to an example problem. So at Prezi, in simpler times, there used to be a Prezi Classic website, and it was served by a backend monolith. But then we grew. Now your Prezi Classic website, it actually became your consumer web. Then we had mobile apps. Then we have Prezi Business for different businesses who would like to buy parts from us and maybe give their give them to their employees and staff. Then there is Prezi resellers, which is our API clients who would like to use our APIs to sell gift cards on their platform to their customers. So B to B to C. Now, these interfaces or channels are very different. For example, for mobile apps, you might have options of push notifications, geolocation, and you might upload videos for gifting so, and it might not be actually available on consumer web. Similarly, for Prezi businesses, there's an option for businesses, there's an interface for businesses to sign up, uh, uh, like a proper portal to sign up. But for Prezi resellers, we are just about APIs. You don't even have an interface. Now, each of these have very different demands. And we at Prezi have been trying actively to move away from monolith to a service-oriented architecture. And hence, one way we decided to solve this problem is using PFFs. Now, what, what that does mean is that your consumer web would now be served by a web BFF, your Android app by Android BFF, um, your iOS app by iOS BFF, and your business app by uh, business app, uh, sorry, Prezi Business and Prezi Resellers by one single business VFF. Now, when you do all these work, you come and, and then we slowly get rid of the monolith as well. Now, as you start on this work, you, you would feel like, how many BFFs is the right number of BFFs? Now, obviously, you can say that we have a very separate Android team and very separate iOS team. The code bases are different. The release cycles are different. Well, that's good. Separate BFFs are good. but at Prezi, we'd have feature parity. Now, all the features that are available in your Android app are also available in your iOS app. 
So it makes much more sense to actually have a common BFF for both of them and have a mobile BFF instead. Another example is of the business BFF. Now, as I mentioned that Prezi business portal, it has an interface, but APIs, they do not really have an interface. And at Prezi, both of these products or channels, they are managed by separate teams. They have a very different product roadmap. And there's also very different and, uh, modes of payment. So it makes more sense to actually have a separate BFF for both Prezi business and both Prezi resellers. And we come to another proposed solution, uh, version 2.0. Now, again, there were things like the organization structure, feature parity, and product roadmap, which helps you make that decision. And you don't want to make too many BFFs. It may add more complexity. And similarly, you don't want too many microservices, as it can also add too much complexity. All right. Now, uh, micro front end architectures. Um, how many of you have heard about MFEs or uh, micro front end architectures or worked on them? Quite a few. Nice. So, Micro front-end architectures have been gaining a lot of popularity because you have one single front-end app with multiple small front-end apps individually managed, or uh, it, it makes it easier to uh, write the code, deploy them. Now, how do we use BFFs with a micro front-end architecture? Let's look at an example of Prezi Business. Now, the Prezi Business interface, it has two micro front-ends. One is the portal, and the other one is the campaign. Now, both of these are actually managed by two different teams. They have very different needs. Portal is for users to sign up, buy gift cards, uh, look at the invoices, et cetera, et cetera. And the campaigns is to run promotions and those things. Now, if they're so different, it makes more sense to actually have a different BFF for them. And now, when we have differentiated with the BFFs, what we have got is the Prezi business portal served by the business BFF, and it could be managed by the same team. Similarly, the campaigns team can manage the campaigns BFF. And now we have got a slice of the whole app managed by one single team. So no more dependencies, a lot more cleanup and you have gone vertical. Okay, so I have been boasting about BFFs and why to choose a BFF is obviously your front ends have very specialized needs or you want some performance optimization and it allows, it gives you more autonomy on what you want to uh, share, give to your clients or apps or what you don't want there. You can even have some fine grained security measures to hide any sensitive information and reduce the risk of exposing critical information to unintended clients. But why not to choose a BFF? Obviously, it comes with some developmental complexity. It uh, needs developers, it needs resources, and has an increased infrastructure and maintenance costs. Um, so if you are working on a very small project, you might be better off without a BFF you might do better with monoliths, they're not that bad. So, and also uh, with API synchronization, with so many API uh, uh, customizations, it might be hard to keep them all in sync. So does that mean that BFFs could actually be your enemies? Well, it absolutely depends on the situation. And if you feel like that, you might be able to try GraphQL API gateways, or just any microservice. Another question would be, does my current architecture have to be changed? No, BFFs come like a plug and play thing. So if your method contracts are the same, just you might need some minimal changes and you can just fit that layer in. Finally, why should we invest hard on money and precious time in this? Now, if you have a very good microservice architecture, you might not have to. 
But if you still are struggling with your monolith and you're trying to break it apart, it might actually give you more time to continue doing that. It might give you, it might increase the life of your current system. And if you are trying to scale and you know that your monolith or your system might fail, it might not be able to handle the load. That's where your BFF would be able to support it. Awesome. Um, so are you ready to befriend a BFF? Thank you. Any, any questions? Very impressive. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I no, the question is that I've been using for BFS for five years. Mm -hmm. I've got apps. One of the key things is fantastic for us. Um, how about developers? It's bringing up the data that's dished up across the infrastructure and much better. So, space up development. Um, the other key thing is technologies like Stackbrand technologies, Pixel Edison, really Awesome. See, another one who loves BFS. <laughs> Yes. Now, what will be some stark differences between putting an API gateway and a BFF load? So, basically, you can choose any of them. It, it is more like a gateway. It's not complex. It's either one. But why would you do a BFF over an API gateway? How about I give you the answer after this? I think the thing what we can tell you is architecture is have the BFF. Thank you. So, yes. So, GraphQL, you can use it. So, for, for just so for example, you want some data, your APIs would give you everything. But with GraphQL, you can actually decide what you exactly want. But BFF is more like another layer uh, that you can use. And my understanding is that depending yeah. on the application, there's sometimes yes. performance improvements yes. as well. Yeah. Um, GraphQL can be a bit slow sometimes. Yeah. We think. use both actually, oh, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Cool. Well done. Um, thank you. And a special thanks to Katie, <laughs> uh, Tanushka, who's my manager here, and also Michael Lambert, who helped me with uh, all the mentoring for this talk. Thank you.